From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. All right, and we are back. We are jumping to a a weird story. It's strange news. I would call it strange news for sure. It's a little bit stale maybe because the original things that occurred happened last year in November and then were updated in June of 2021 this year. But the big news is coming out right now, and I think we should talk about it. Let's do it. Uh, this story has to do with money. People, people who manage budgets, people who manage accounts, and uh, what happens when someone with access to the funnel of that cheese, uh, maybe Ooh, decides to do something. I love a good cheese something. funnel. <laughs> a cheese funnel. Is it what like happens? a cheese fountain, like at <laughs> yeah. at, uh, at uh, Golden Corral? Oh, really? Ooh, yeah, they have it's a thing. <laughs> That's the thing. Okay. Please continue. Pay me no mind. Uh, so sorry. So okay, well, what happens when somebody who has access to where that begins, or at least uh, an access point somewhere within the chain, decides to do something wrong? Well, herein lies the story of Ralph Puglisi, a 59-year-old man now, today, as we record this, who was working for the University Medical Service Association Incorporated. That's what he was working for. They are associated with the University of South Florida, And he's one of these guys who's kind of higher level manager on the money side of this organization. And he just pled guilty to embezzling $12.8 million. Woo! Woo! Yeah, that's a huge, that's a huge amount of money to embezzle. Uh, You know, I always, I always think back to a certain Mike Judge movie when it comes to embezzling money taking a tiny bit of, you know, or trying to take a tiny bit of money off the top of every transaction or something. Uh, In this case, it was very different. In this case, Ralph was using company credit cards and accounts to just make huge payments for things. Uh, Payments that were very odd in general. And according to the Tampa Bay Times, he would he would just try and mask some of these payments and invoices for large sums of money. And he got away with it for a long time. Kind of weird. I'm trying to imagine, uh, just to give an example, Noel and Ben and I, as a part of our duties as, you know, producers here, executive producers, we have to do a thing where we cite invoices, right? If we make a payment, Uh, on the behalf of the company for some service, some good, some recording equipment, or some studio time, we have to go through and report exactly what that is, give a receipt, you know, give a reason for spending that money. I'm Well, Ralph had to do the same kind of thing, but the people around him, the people, you know, who he reported to, apparently were just not noticing or looking the other way, or worse. Well, I mean, you know, as we know, being part of a large organization like like we are, uh, this seemed to be a relatively small nonprofit corporation. I mean, comparatively, mm-hmm. but like iHeartRadio is a massive company. And uh, I think we've all, you know, to varying degrees, um, uh, been behind on those expense reports and usually only get robo emails. Um, <laughs> it's not like we have someone knocking down our door saying, hey, where are those expense reports? Where are those TPS reports? You know, nobody mm-hmm. is really doing that. So... It's pretty common, I think, for things like that to lapse. Uh, you know, and that's not like anything that we're not reporting is because we're doing anything nefarious. Um, it's usually because we're just underwater and haven't gotten a chance to get to it yet. And it's usually very obvious based on what we're buying and it's going to somebody. You know, it's not like we're stockpiling this stuff. But Matt, this is not what was happening with this story. This well, stuff this is going to a very specific thing uh, that <laughs> seems like it would have immediately raised a red flag, if not just for this reason alone. Well, <laughs> agreed. Uh, agreed. Uh, we're not doing anything wrong. And- and I'm just uh, stressing that. But this uh, this guy was, and it was going to a weird place, going to a couple weird places. I'm going to start on the lower end, the stuff that's reported later in all the articles that you can read about this. 
before we get to the juicy thing, Noel, if that's okay. Please, please. Um, I'm glad I didn't spoil it. So uh, this guy is accused, according to the Tampa Bay Times, of making around $650,000 in payments to an LLC that was owned by himself and his wife. Um, like personal travel that went up like $375,000 in personal travel. Can you imagine traveling that much? No, <laughs> I cannot. Um, and we travel a lot and we know what those bills about too. And they ain't nowhere near that. Yeah. Uh, how about, how about this? $190,000 in rent payments. I'm trying to think of how much I've paid in rent over the course of my life. And it's a lot of houses, a lot of places that I've rented. Don't think I get anywhere near that. So I'm wondering, you know, there's no breaking down of this right now, at least in these articles. But yes, in the court proceedings, I'm sure they're doing that. Um, $121,000 in house improvements. Oh, Noel, how about this? Twenty-one grand in cell phone bills. It's Twenty-one insane. grand. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what, what? What? A cell phone bill is like a hundred. I mean, I have. I pay for my and my mom's cell phone bill, and it's two hundred dollars a month, if not a little <laughs> less. Like, what could possibly? Uh, what? What are you doing? Well, I don't it's know. A lot of roaming. He, it's a lot of roaming. He also sent a hundred dollars to his wife's PayPal account. So you know, that was really the. The nail in the coffin there. But no, let's let's jump to the main reason why we're talking about this as strange news. This guy found a way somehow, and I think this is one of the one of the main cruxes of why he agreed, why he's pleading guilty, why he signed the plea agreement back in June. Um, he was funneling money to a website called mygirlfund.com now what we're going to talk about here if anyone's listening and there there are children or younger people uh maybe consider pausing or skipping forward um i'll just say before we go any further this is a this is an adult website for adult things that we're going to discuss okay Okay, we'll, we'll continue. We talking like an OnlyFans type stitch, Matt? Are we talking like a Pornhub Premium? Um, like uh, I just need I need the details. It's man. a it's like a cam site, if that makes sense. But it's okay. also a adult like chat cam site. I don't so really it's know. Chatterbait, probably is it Chatterbait? Is that what it is? Like, guys, I'd, clearly I'm a porn aficionado. I don't know what that <laughs> is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm really showing my hand here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, we'll stop. The kids are gone. What is Chatterbait? I don't even know what that is. It's a cam. Yeah. It's just a cam site. It's a cam okay. site that involves communication back and forth. I don't use it. I'm just I'm, I'm keyed in to the internet and the zeitgeist, you guys. I just know about this stuff. Um, but it, it's uh, yeah, it's something where you can have you know direct communication. You can give gifts. You can give tips. You know, it's, it's it involves chatting directly, and you can have you know the performers do certain things depending okay. on how much you tip so point being is it's not a subscription service and it could be an all bets are off thing where if you really have a problem and you're in some sort of like porn addiction rabbit hole you could be dropping mad cash on a particular performer of your choice that would be like uh, outrageous well you may think that that's what ralph was doing but it seems like there's something else at play as well he according to the tampa bay times uh, we said $12.86 million in total that he embezzled. Well, 11 and a half million of that went to mygirlfund.com. Jeez. Uh, 11 and a half million dollars. Wow. And before, you know, you think, wow, this guy just was, yeah, like you said, really into a few people and gave them a lot of money. Um, he was actually embezzling this money with they think authorities think with the help of a family f or or a, a close family associate let's say according to authorities they believe this person was his stepson's fiance uh they reportedly found an excel document that showed around seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in profits that they had made through somehow giving money to this website and buying credits with that money because it's like a they've got a credit system where you use your your actual currency to buy the credits then you donate those credits to 
the person, the page of the person, I so guess. So this is a laundering? It's a cover-up kind of kind of thing? Or? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, this is, that's why I want to talk about it. It's really, it, it's just something that I don't have a full understanding of, but I, I'm interested in. Because it, it reminds me of some of the scams you can do with um, like a, a gift card that you would buy totally. from somewhere. And then you put money that's kind of ill-gotten onto a onto a card like that, then you can use that card or you can cash out that card. Sure. Um, it's kind of like that, only they were funneling it through this particular website. And I want to read to you, I want to read you what it says on mygirlfund.com. This is from an FAQ. It says, what does the money in each girl's fund go towards? And I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's very cringeworthy. But it does say, your generous contributions will get her one step closer to her goal, whatever that may be. So whatever they did, because we don't know exactly, we know that they were funneling tons and tons of money through this website. The question is whether or not the, the people who run the website and the finances of the website had any idea it was happening, because surely that was a large, tr- like those are large transactions, I'm assuming. Yeah. 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 Uh, right. Or was it, were the, just, was it just the two of them working together? Uh, how else were they funneling this money through? This is what we have from the UMSA, according to the Tampa Bay Times. Um, This full, the full report that was generated found that the internal controls, you know, after all this stuff went down, right? Uh, And several people got fired, including Ralph. An auditor got fired and another superior got fired. This is what they found. Um, Their controls for preventing fraud were weak. The university's internal audit team identified numerous transactions where he was just processing entries in a way that concealed his actions. And it says they have since, quote, implemented enhanced control structures, including upgrading financial reporting systems to better protect against criminal acts. Okay. Uh, Good good on them, I suppose. That's great, right? (laughs) After a couple, you know, 12 dozen million dollars. Uh, just goes out the door. I, I just feel like, I mean, my credit card company cuts me off if I spend too much money, like out of state. Like, how are there not like obvious, like red flag, you know, like algorithms built into these massive financial? Co- you know, what I mean, I mean, same with the uh, iHeart. Like, for example, like we we have corporate cards that we have to use sometimes, and we were just at a conference, and I had to pay for a bunch of hotel rooms for other people. I got a red flag email from you know our finance department. Uh, I think it was auto generated, and then it was forwarded to me by an actual human, making sure that these charges were legit. Um. And I said, yes, they're legit. But it was me, the potential fraudster, that was saying, yes, these charges are legit uh, for reasons. So I suppose if that same thing happened with our guy here, it could have been a similar situation. But it just all of these just seem so suspicious, every single one. Yeah, it, it's some weird stuff. And I'm, we're not even going into all the details here. But I, I'm going to read you uh, this last thing, which is, so where did this money come from? He's working for a nonprofit associated with the University of South Florida. Uh, they they seem to be involved, at least from my understanding, with staffing. So staffing a lot of the organization's needs. Um, I, there's medical, really big medical schools there. It said the stolen money, quote, came from funds generated by patient care and just wait for it. No state philanthropic grant or research money was impacted. So, you know, just the money that patients were going in for procedures and for healthcare, that's all that was stolen. Uh, <laughs> but I guess if, from the company's standpoint, that means that's basically their profits. It's not the, you know, the money they were holding for any other major reason. Freaking uh, wild, dude. Really weird stuff. Uh, you know, (laughs) what's the stuff they don't want you to know? Well, there are a lot of people who are somewhat connected to the financial processes of companies across the world. And it makes me wonder how much of this stuff is happening on what kind of scale, right? Is it really tiny stuff? Are we, are we thinking office space level here or are we thinking what the office space Guys actually did, accidentally, 
right? And stole millions and millions of dollars. It would be really cool to know if you've ever heard of anything like this, if you've got an interesting account of something like this occurring, or maybe even an historical example. We would love to hear from you. 